Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Hugh Sung. I am the assistant to the oral history program of the Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, which is docked here in Camden, New Jersey. And today is Monday, October 1st of 2018. We are on board the Battleship New Jersey, and our interview guest is uh, Raymond Michael Allen uh, from Fairdale, Kentucky. Uh, Mr. Allen served on the Battleship New Jersey during its uh, commissioning uh, in Vietnam. And uh, Mr. Allen, do you prefer to be called Michael? Yes. All right. Okay, Michael, well, welcome back to the Battleship New Jersey. Okay, thank you for showing me around. I yeah. really enjoyed it. Okay, it's an honor to have you back on board, sir. All right, so uh, let's begin the interview uh, by asking, what is your current age? Uh, I'm, I'll be uh, 70 years old, October the 10th. Okay. And uh, when did you enlist in the United States Navy? I enlisted in Louisville, Kentucky, and it was in uh, October of uh, 1967. Okay. And, uh, and uh, I served uh, two years on the USS New Jersey when, when it was in Vietnam. All right, sir. Uh, so what was your inspiration to join the Navy? Well, my grandfather was in the Navy, and I just kind of wanted to follow in his footsteps. And uh, that's, uh, that's why I enlisted into the Navy. Okay. Anything you remember from walking to the recruiter's office? From the recruiter's office? Yeah, anything you remember from that part? Uh, no, I don't remember a whole lot about that. That was 50 years ago, so uh, I don't remember a whole lot. Of, actually, I joined on a buddy plan. I don't know if you re, uh, remember that or not, but uh, they at that time they had a buddy plan, and me and one of my buddies decided we joined the Navy. And uh, we uh, I was a year older than him, and his... Uh, his birthday was in October also, and uh, we really couldn't leave until he turned 18. He had signed up and everything, but couldn't finalize everything until he was 18. So that's uh, when he turned 18 in October, we joined the Navy on the buddy system and went through boot camp together. And, uh, and at that time, when you join on the buddy plan, you were supposed to more or less stay together. Well. Uh, he went to uh, Florida, and I went to California, so that was the end of the buddy plan. So, uh, But he, he went to do, a, uh, he was accepted into something in the electrical field, and I was accepted into the gunner's mates division, and, uh, and that's what we did. We both kind of split ways and went to do our separate trainings, you know. Okay. And uh, that's... Uh, I went to, to uh, San Diego was where I was, went to San Diego for pre-com training and was there for several months uh, just learning all different kinds of stuff, firefighting and different things and what to do and different kind of uh, uh, situations, you know. Okay. Uh, just to back up, sir, you said uh, boot camp was in Florida? No, the boot camp was in Chicago, Illinois. All right, Great Lakes, correct? Yeah, Great Lakes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you remember from there? Oh, I remember a lot from. <laughs> I remember being cold for one thing, and uh, and uh, just uh, just the everyday stuff. What you have to go through, what they teach you. Mostly discipline. Mostly discipline in boot camp, you know. Or it was then. That's more or less what they taught you then, and. Uh, you know, you'd have to do some stuff that was kind of silly. You know, you'd have to stand guard with an empty gun at a garbage can or something, you know. But uh, it was more or less just a disciplined thing to uh, make you do what you was told to do, you know. And uh, uh, it was uh, it was interesting, but uh, not a lot of fun. <laughs> but uh, it was a lot better when we uh, got out of boot camp and went our separate ways. Okay. And so after that, you went to, uh, was it San Diego? San Diego, California, okay. yeah. That was called pre-com training. Okay. And uh, I would kind of buddied up with a guy from Alabama that was just still a friend of mine. We still talk occasionally. And uh, I was supposed to meet him there, and we had a date to be there. And I was on time, but uh, he showed up about three or four days late, so... Uh, I really don't know what happened there, but uh, uh, anyway, he showed up and he asked me how much trouble he was in, 
and I kind of told him I really didn't know we just have to go see so we went down and we reported in and he just reported in like I did and they had signing of barracks and uh, nothing really ever come of it but we stayed uh we stayed friends for probably a year and a half till we were separated you know just really about as tired as you could be and uh, of course I did miss him when when he left the ship he had to left he, had, he was sent home due to a death in his family. His brother was killed in a car accident. And uh, when he returned back to California, they assigned him to another ship, you know. And, uh, and uh, the, uh, of course, I had other friends on there, but uh, I really did miss him. You know, you kind of buddy up with somebody in, in that type of situation. Oh, yeah, certainly. And uh, is there anything else I can tell you about the ship or anything? Um, well, while you're at San Diego, is this where you got your gunner's mate training? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Anything you remember from uh, gunner's mate training? Well, it was gunner's mate training, and it was also the training about the ship, you know. Okay. How everything was divided off, how important it was if something happened to uh, close off, you know, the dog the doors down and all that. There was a whole lot of stuff involved in it. Uh, there was actually, they would actually uh, uh, fill compartments up with water with you in them, and you had to make your way out, and uh, and uh, they had the firefighting where you went down in these dark buildings and climbed out ladders and everything in smoky buildings and stuff like that. It was it was just more or less the basic training to survive on a ship, you know, okay. if anything was to happen. Now, now, you were trained on uh, the ship's guns, correct? Yes. Right yeah, here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, did they also train you in small arms? Yes, we had we had that. Now, we had some of that in boot camp and then a, a, a little bit of other just, you know, just gun range shooting and stuff like that, yeah. Okay. Did you know you were getting assigned to the battleship in Jersey while you're in San Diego? Uh, yeah, I think I knew that. I, I believe that. When I went there, I think it was on my records that that's what I was being trained for. And uh, like I said, I was there for several months, and then uh, uh, I was uh, shipped up to Philadelphia and actually worked on the ship, getting it ready for commission. And uh, we was here for a while, and then uh, was here during the, the commission of the ship and, and when it left here and, and went to uh, Long Beach, California, where that was its home port, you know. Okay, so you arrived in Philadelphia before the um, New Jersey was going to get commissioned, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you saw her before uh, they fully completed her. Well, yeah, there was still a lot of stuff being done to it when I got here. Yeah. Oh, okay. They was doing a lot of work on it and uh, just getting everything ready and All and right. then uh, went through the commission process. Okay. Did you see her get towed from? Uh, her sister ships. I'm sorry. Because uh, she was tied alongside the Iowa and yeah, the Iowa and Missouri and the Missouri and yeah. All right. Yeah, we actually uh, would go to those ships and uh, get parts that we needed to uh, repair stuff and different things. Oh, okay. So, uh, do you remember your first reaction when you saw the New Jersey? I thought it was very, very big. Okay. But when you're on it for a year or so, it's it don't seem all that big. Okay. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was a uh, it was interesting. It was very interesting. Okay, uh, but were those ships still tied together when you got there? I, uh, really, all I remember, I thought I think it was Iowa and Missouri. Uh, that's the only ones that I really remember. Okay, because it was supposed to be in between both ships, so they had to like, you know, tug her out of there. I think they moved one of them out and then brought the New Jersey to the dock. Yeah. All right. All right. So anything you remember from the process of getting the ship ready? Uh, no, just the, all the cleaning, painting, and everything like that. You know, okay. just, yeah. Yeah, you witnessed the removal of any of the 40 millimeter guns? Uh, no, I don't remember that, no. Okay. I really don't. All right. So April 7th was the recommissioning ceremony. Uh, anything you remember from uh, that day? Uh, really, about all I remember is just going out through the Delaware River. That's it. Really about all I remember. Okay. Uh, uh, that's about all I remember about it. Right. Remember 
some lady busting the champagne on it or whatever, but I couldn't tell you what her name was. No. Now. now, some of the sailors said they were protesters uh, during this time. Uh, do you remember any protesters? Of the what? Uh, some of the sailors mentioned they were protesters uh, during this time. I don't remember that. No, I don't. Okay. I really don't. No, I just, what I basically remember about the commission and stuff and when we left is just all of us being on the decks in our dress clothes and going out through the Delaware River, you know. Okay. Yeah. Now, this is when you began sea trials, correct? Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, uh, right, uh, during the sea trials, the guns were being test fired. Uh, is that correct? Uh, you know, I think we done a, we done a lot more testing than we you know when we got to California. I think. Okay. Yeah, because I can I can remember us uh, testing and firing the guns there, and uh, actually like some old ships that they would let us practice on and sink. You know. Okay. Uh, off the coast of California. All right. Now, uh, did you get to uh, meet Captain Snyder? I never did meet him personally. No, I've seen him several times, but I never did meet him personally. Oh, okay. Because uh, uh, one thing he's known for is uh, on the zero one one level, where 40 millimeter gun tubs used to be, he converted them to swimming pools. Oh, yeah. Well, I did know about it. I did know about that. Okay. And I probably did see it at one time, but I don't remember a whole lot about it. Okay. I do remember that, yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, it is said that before it was turned to a swimming pool, shipyard workers threw stuff in the empty tub, and then when the turrets fired, they got blown off. I don't remember uh, that. You know? No. Okay. This, uh, some people said that yeah. it happened, and that's why the captain turned into a fool. Yeah. Right. Okay, so uh, before you got to California, you had to get through the canal, right? Yeah, I went through the Panama okay. Canal. Anything you remember from going through I the I remember canal? about all of that. That was, that was exciting to watch it go through. Uh, it's uh, it was very close. I mean, it tore accommodation ladder brackets and everything off the ship going through. And uh, I can remember the all the mules that they had. Uh, they call them mules that pull the ships through. I remember all that, and it, it was really interesting to go through there. It really was. And I, I can't remember exactly how long it took, but I know it took a pretty good while to get get the ship through the canal. Okay, so when you say mules, uh, you mean like a particular vehicle? No, it's some kind of, it's a, like a, uh, it's like machines that run on these tracks that okay. actually pull the, pull the vessels through the canal. Okay. It's a, uh, but uh, it's, it's a, it was a, really a close, tight fit because I can remember the smoke coming off the side of the walls and everything when they was when it was tearing the brackets and stuff off. Oh, so the ship did scrape? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it, it scraped on both sides, yeah. Right. And then when I went through the canal, of course, went on around to, in, to the Gulf and around to uh, California. Okay. Uh, where in California did you stop? Uh, uh, we went to... Uh, our home port was uh, Long Beach, California, but I can remember being on a ship. We went to uh, uh, we went to San Francisco. We was in San Francisco Harbor, and uh, and uh, but uh, I guess that's when we was doing trials and stuff like that. We would go up the coast, you okay. know. Do you remember going under the Golden Gate Bridge? Yeah, I just barely kind of remember going under that. Yeah. All right. Were there a yeah. lot of spectators looking over. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, so after this, uh, you were on your way to Hawaii? Yeah, we stopped in Hawaii, and uh, we were in Singapore, and the Philippines. The Philippines was, our, uh, Philippines was our home port when we was in Vietnam. That's where we would come back to at different times. But normally, we would go to Vietnam and uh, fire on far off the coast of California or Vietnam for most of the time about 40 or 45 days, something like that at a time. And uh, we would stay out there for, I don't know, uh, uh, weeks at a time, far. And then uh, we would come back to our home port occasionally and 
the Philippines and spend three or four days and then go back. And, but I do remember one time we stayed on the gun line for 60 days, which was a which was a pretty long time to be out there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, certainly is, sir. Yeah. Uh, now, were you when you were at uh, Hawaii? Did you pass by the Arizona? Uh, yeah, we passed by the Arizona scene. Yeah. Okay. It said that one sailor was lost uh, during this time. Do you remember that? Do what? One sailor uh, was lost overboard. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember one sailor being lost. I don't remember his name. Or I don't remember a whole lot of details about it. Really, uh, you know, you have a muster every morning where they take a head count and all that and call out your name and everything. And I remember him, him missing the roll call. But uh, I never did know a whole lot about it, yeah. Never did know all the, the fine details about it. I just knew that we did have one missing, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's always a sad thing when a sailor goes missing. But some uh, sail some sailors did say that it, it happened. Yeah, He yeah. fell overboard or jumped. I heard that, know. too, that he came up missing and he never was found. I did know that, yeah. Okay. All right, so um, let's uh, shift the conversation and talk about uh, life on board. Uh, uh, do you remember any uh, recreation or entertainment that you and your fellow sailors engaged in? Uh, we played cards, done a lot of different things. At times, we would shoot clay pigeons off the back of the ship. A lot of times, just watch the, watch the stuff in the ocean, you know, different times, porpoises and different things like that, you know, that would come up beside the oh. ship. And, and uh, and different things like that. Yeah. Okay, you would keep shotguns in the ship's armory. Do I keep shotguns in the ship's uh, I, armory? You know, uh, they would bring them out, and uh, it was it was a real organized thing. You know, you could do it if you wanted to, you know, or not. You know, okay. it was more or less up to you if you wanted to do it. You know. All right. These weren't the same ones used by Master at Arms, are they? By what? These weren't the same uh, weapons used by the master at arms on board. Uh, that I couldn't tell you. I don't okay. know. Okay, because just sporting shotguns are very different. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. Shooting clay pigeons yeah. out at sea. Yeah. Right. Uh, do you remember like uh, any music? Yeah, we played guitars and different things like that. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember the food on board? Like the how? The food was, it? was great. It was some of the best food you ever eat. Every, I can't, I, I can't believe anybody would, would say that they didn't enjoy the food on the New Jersey because the New Jersey, it, they had great food. They really did. They had uh, some fabulous food. We had lobster, steak. I mean, practically anything you can think of, we had at one time or another. Okay. And uh, it was always good. We always had great food. We really did. And even the, even the mid wraps and stuff was good. You know, like when you get off a, you get off a late watch or something. There was always somebody in the kitchen. You could go down and get something to eat. You know. Okay. Would that be at the gee dunk? They call it. Yeah. Yeah. That's just where you could get about anything you want. Junk food, different things like that. Yeah. All right. Some sailors spoke of ethnic nights. Of what? Uh, something called ethnic nights. Uh, I don't know what that is. I don't. Oh, okay. I just wondering if you ever. Uh, no, I don't about know it. what that would be. Okay. Well, like for example, one night they'll decide Mexican, another night they'll decide Mediterranean. Oh, no. Uh, they would. They would have. A, it usually wouldn't be all one thing. You would have a choice of what you wanted. You know, you could more or less get what you wanted. Okay. They they might have some Mexican food on the buff. You know, like it's more of a buffet sort of thing where you could, you know, they dip what you wanted or whatever. But it was a, it was really good food. It really was. Okay. Uh, do you remember any USO shows? Uh, oh, yes. Yes, okay. I remember. They'd have uh, Bob Hope and uh, Ann Margaret. And, and uh, they would they would have people like that come on the ship occasionally. Okay. Yeah. You remember watching them? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. How close were you, uh, were you to um, the celebrities? Well, I was in the crowd. I wouldn't say I was that close, but I was in the crowd, you know. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a break from what we was doing, anyway. 
but uh, everybody really enjoyed it. Okay. Right. Uh, do you remember crossing uh, the equator? Yes, I do. Okay. I remember that. Uh, I don't think you could actually forget that. Because the first time you go across, I'm sure you know you're a polywog when you first go across. And uh, you do a lot of crawling on your knees. You get hit a lot. And uh, you go through garbage chutes. It's, uh, there's a whole lot involved in the shellback initiation. And uh, uh, I don't see how anybody could ever forget that. It was, you got, uh, uh, it's something you never forget. It's, a, it's one of them historic memories, really. All right. Well, you did earn that certificate, right? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. All right. You remember, like, King Neptune? Oh, I remember uh, all sailor. that, yeah. And the Royal Baby and all that stuff. And I remember being hit with pieces of fire hose and everything. It was just, you did not raise up. You stayed on the deck till you got through it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Uh, anything else you remember uh, with regards to uh, leisure time on the ship? Uh, no. We just more or less done our own thing. You know, uh, playing guitars, playing cards, and, and uh, uh, you know, looking forward to the next time we got back to port, you know, and uh, have a little recreation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so let's shift the conversation to your um, sea duties. Uh, so you were, your battle stations was turret number three, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you have any, like, watch stations as well? Oh, yeah. You had, uh, you had watch, you know, every so often, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, you'd have to stand guard in the tour or different places, you know. You had, everybody had a watch station at one time or another. Okay. Uh, did you have one or several? Uh, I can't remember exactly how it was, but we would, like I said, every, every so often you had to stand guard somewhere at something, you know. Okay. The tour, you know, at the tour or something like that. And, uh, but uh, mostly my job was uh, in the uh, projectile ring and the powder ring, you know. Okay. Uh, so how was like going to uh, general quarters? Well, uh, you just manned your station, you know. When the alarms went off, you manned your station and you was ready, you know. Okay. Did you ever have duties in like the fire room? Duties in the what? The fire room. The fire room? Firing room? Uh, some of them call them uh, boilers. Oh, no, 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 I never had any duties in there, no. Okay. Have you ever been to one of the gun plots where they actually pulled the triggers? Yes, I, well, not until today. I, I never had been until today, no. Oh, okay. Where they actually fired the gun? You're talking about where uh, that? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, no. Oh, okay. Uh, do you remember how long it took to get to your general quarters station? Like how long, how much time they gave you? Uh, it was, it was a pretty quick thing. I mean, it probably took maybe a couple of minutes to get to your, you know, your, your station when they called for general quarters. You know. Okay. Uh, have you ever witnessed any at at sea replenishments, like ammunition transfer, like replenishing ammunition? Have you ever? Been oh to say yes, that? yes, yes. We done that. That's when they we would have to lower the lower the projectiles down into the ship and, uh, and retain them in the, in the straps and the, in the gun rings and stuff, yeah. And the, uh, the powder, we, I remember uh, we would uh, lower the powders down there in canisters and different things. It was, it was a pretty well an all-day job loading ammunition in the, in the ship. You know, if we'd done it at, at sea, you know. Because they would uh, highline it over or bring it over by helicopter, and then we would drop it down into the ship, you know. Okay. All right, so uh, let's talk about your duties uh, in turret number three. So you worked on one of the shell decks and the uh, powder handling, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mostly worked in the powder room, powder room mostly. Okay. And that was just, uh, you know, loading the powder into the chutes that shot it up to the guns, you know, the elevators that took it up to where the guns were. Okay. Now, uh, you remember removing the powder bags from the uh, canisters? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is said that 
you worked in like 15 minute shifts to get fresh air, is that correct? Yeah, well, yeah, something like that. We would, we just done what we had to do, you know, whatever we had to do. When you was, uh, when they called on our tour at the fire, you know, it would keep you pretty busy, you know, keeping it, keeping everything loaded and ready. All right. But you wouldn't remove the powder from the canisters until you actually uh, were ready to fire, right? Yeah, until they needed, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they'd take them out of canisters and put them in the, move them over to the elevators to take them up, yeah. Okay, they weighed 110 pounds each. Yeah, they were heavy. Okay. Do you remember passing them through the scuttles and turning those knobs? Yeah, yeah, I, I remember all that, yeah. All right. Uh, so what was that experience like, just for the historical record? Uh, it was just something you had to do. It was just like having a regular everyday job. It was just your job to do it, and you done it, you know. That was what it amounted to. Okay. How was it like carrying those powder bags? Uh, it's no problem. Okay. Probably paying for it now, but it, was, it wasn't no problem then. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, let's talk about your uh, arrival to the gun line uh, in Vietnam. Uh, do you remember like any of the um, engagements, like engaging an island or? Sailing? No, it, it's really hard for me to remember where we was at, different places. Uh, we spent a lot of time on the DMZ line down in that area. But uh, we were, uh, you know, we were just there in my opinion, the way or what the what I've gathered from it, we were there, like when the military, the ground military troops would go into an area, we would more or less blow it all up before they went in, and uh, and I think that was really our job, just to clear the way out for them to get in there, you know, okay. and take over different things. But we was on the uh, the DMZ line for a long time, sometimes up to sixty days. Okay. In that area, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you couldn't see it all. You were deep inside the. Tank, yeah, I right? was down down inside the powder room. I didn't see what was going on up there. You know. Okay. Because all we done was kept the, we what our job was was just to keep everything up there and keep it loaded. Okay. For them to fire, you know, the yeah. the people that was actually doing the firing. Yeah. Now, when the guns fired, you could still feel it from down below, right? Uh, yeah, you could feel it. Yeah. All right. Did it like uh, cause a lot of? Yeah, just a vibration like, but it, it really the noise was not bad. There was no loud noise down in there, hardly. Okay. Just to, from the everything running and the elevators and stuff like that running, that was the noise down there. It wasn't actually from shooting a gun. Yeah. Okay. You would get a buzzer alarm before the guns fired, right? Get a what? Uh, there would be a buzzer alarm before the guns fired. Uh, I believe so, yeah. Okay, yeah. that you would hear? Yeah, you know, like I said, it's been 50 years. It's kind of hard to remember every little uh, detail, you know. Were you ever out, outside when the guns fired? Yes, I was outside a lot uh, when turret one and turret two was firing. We were outside a lot when they would be firing. A lot of times they would, a lot of times they would just fire like turret one, maybe turret two, maybe turret three, and uh, very seldom did they fire all three of them. I don't. I think they may have fired them one time when I was on there, all nine guns. Just, to, and I believe it said it would move the ship eight inches sideways when uh, when they fired all three guns okay. at the same time. Okay. But normally they would be firing turret one or turret two or turret three. Usually wouldn't be firing all of them at the same time. Okay. So how's it like experiencing the guns fire while standing outside? Well, it was really interesting because you'd see the smoke. You could actually even see the projectile going through the sky. And uh, when I was on the ship, they claimed they could hit a Volkswagen at 25 miles. So they were they were pretty accurate. So uh, that was good to know. That was that was. I'm sure it was a big help to the ground forces in Vietnam. Okay. Uh, do you remember an incident where the New Jersey rescued downed aviators? A what? Uh, when the New Jersey rescued down aviators in Vietnam. Uh, no, I don't remember that. No, I didn't remember much. Okay. Now, do you remember um, any of the engagements while you were down in turret number th number three? Like, did they ever tell you like what they were shooting at or what they were engaging? 
No, uh, that's what I said. I think, uh, I think I thought that our job was just to blow up the errors before the army people went in to kind of clear it out to make sure that you know there wasn't no you know clear out a bunch of booby traps and stuff like that and different things you know. Right. Yeah. It was one engagement in February of 1969 when New Jersey was firing from zero one hundred to zero six hundred hours. Uh, you don't remember that? Uh, not right off. I oh. don't know. Okay. Well, because it said that during that time uh, there was a Marine on the other end, and he is Oliver North. Like yeah. Oliver North was on the other end at the time, and he actually crashed this ship for saving his life. I don't remember that. No. Okay, well, you're probably down below when that happened. Yeah, I was down below. Most most of my work was down below the deck, so I didn't know what was going on up there. You know, you know, most of, uh, my job was in the powder room and and down in there, and that's where I stayed at most of the time. You know. Okay. Even through the day, if we wasn't if we wasn't firing, we were cleaning or doing maintenance or something like that. You know. Alright. Now, uh, while you were there, uh, there was an accident in turret number three, uh, where a sailor named Andy Tobias was seriously injured, right? Yes. I didn't really see that happen. I just knew about it. I knew that Andy behind Tobias got hung in the projectile ring some way, and uh, uh, a, a fellow, a fellow gunman uh, by the name of Johnson. Uh, his name was Wayne Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, un, uh, he unlatched a, a bullet or a projectile and drug it out of the way to keep it from crushing Tobias. That's, I didn't actually see it, but that's what I heard. Yeah. So you actually. I was there when that happened, but I didn't actually see it happen. Oh. So you actually physically dragged one projectile out of the way. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, and uh, it was just one of them things you do when you're. You know you got to do something because you know it'd be hard to move a 2,700 pound bullet. You know, so but uh, yeah, he did move it out of the way and kept it from crushing the guy. Okay. All right. So uh, after a bombardment in Vietnam, uh, the ship was on its way, supposedly going to be on its way back home, and then word came that uh, you were heading to uh, the Korean waters. Uh, well, yeah, we was headed back to California. Yes, and then you were turned around because of an incident in North Korea, right? Right, yeah. Uh, I, I don't really know all the details to that, but I do know that we were back all, we're fairly close to the California coast, and uh, they turned our ship around and sent us back off the coast of Japan to wait orders uh, because of an incident that happened in Korea, yeah, where they shot down a reconnaissance plane or something like that, you know. Okay. And, uh, and actually, uh, at, uh, let's see, uh, I can't remember exactly the, the date that that happened, but uh, we was on our way home from Vietnam at that time. Do you remember the mood of the crew? Oh, yeah, they were really kind of aggravated because a lot of them would have been discharged as soon as the ship ported in California. And they actually even had their bags back to come home, but uh, uh, they were they were kind of a little aggravated because they didn't really know what was going on and didn't know how long it was going to last, you know. But it it actually didn't last all that long, I don't think. I think we was just over there for maybe a couple of weeks and then come back, you know. Okay, so after that incident, uh, you were on your way home, right? Yeah. Okay. Did you stop by Hawaii first? Or yes, we did stop in Hawaii. Uh, was that on? I, now, it's been so long. I can't remember if we stopped in Hawaii on our way or on the way back. Was it? Was? Uh, do you know if it was on the way back? Uh, I definitely know uh, the ship stopped by Hawaii uh, on the way to Vietnam. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if it stopped by Hawaii. I don't on think the way it back. stopped on the way back. I, I, we stopped on the way to Vietnam. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did stop there. Yeah. Because uh, next thing I believe, the New Jersey was in San Francisco. Uh, okay. Yeah, we had, uh, we was in San Francisco once, uh, but uh, I guess it was just a training program or something, you know. Okay. 
Uh, is there anything else you remember while the ship was off the coast of Vietnam? Uh, no, I think I've told you just about everything I can tell you. Okay. I hope it helps you, but uh, like I said, it's been a long time. Fifty years is a long time, and it's uh, really kind of hard for me to remember much more than what I've what I've done told you. You know. Uh, okay. All right. So now the ship has arrived back to the states, uh, and uh, it's going to be decommissioned. Uh, do you remember that? No, I don't. I wasn't there when it was decommissioned. I was actually, I'd done been dis discharged when it was decommissioned. Okay, so you didn't see the um, decommissioning ceremony or? No. Uh -uh. All right. Did you talk to any of the sailors? No, no. I didn't. Okay. Because it's supposed to be a solemn moment. Because uh, the ship uh, was going to receive a new captain uh, who was going to command the ship on the second tour to Vietnam. Uh, and then word came down the ship was going to be decommissioned. Yeah. So it kind of hit the, kind of hit hard. Yeah. All right, so um, uh, anything else you remember while you're on board the battleship? No, I can't really remember anything else. I think I've told you about all I can tell you. Okay. Well, let's talk about um, any ports of call uh, you visited. Uh, do any of them stand out? Uh, yes, let's see. We went to, like I said, we was in Yokosuka, Japan, and uh, was in Singapore, and uh, then the Philippines. And I think that was about the only ports that we were in. Okay. And, uh, but uh, the Philippines, we was in several times because, like I said, that was our home port when we was overseas. We would come back there, refuel, and pick up supplies and stuff like that, you know. Uh, anything that stands out from any of the ports, like the people or anything you remember when you stepped ashore? No, not a whole lot. It was just more or less a party time, you know. Oh. You had a few days away from things, so you kind of partied the whole time he was there, you oh. know. So that was called Liberty, right? Yeah. Okay. Any liberties that stand out that you can remember? Uh, no, not really. Just, uh, you know, uh, what, you didn't know what really was there. You just tried to see as much as you could while you was there, you know. Try to take in as much as you could. Okay. Uh, do you remember any like family day? Uh, did that ever happen on the ship? Family days? Yes, that's when uh, family members can come visit. Yeah, they had some of them in California. When I was in California, some of the families would come and different things, and we would have we'd have like a ship's party occasionally out on an island off the coast of California, and. Uh, 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 you know, different things like that, just to, enter, you know, for entertainment, yeah. Right. And that was a time when ship, the ship was open for tour, right? Well, yeah, they would let them, uh, they would let the family and stuff visit, you know, and tour the ship, you know, when we was in port in California, you know. Okay. Right. Yeah. Anybody crawl through the guns? No, uh, they, would not, they wouldn't let them go oh, okay. through the guns and stuff like that. All right. Uh, so, uh, back to the ship, uh, you said you didn't meet uh, Captain Snyder? No, okay. not, not personally that I can remember, no. Did you remember meeting any other high-ranking officers, like the executive officer? Uh, no, not really. We kind of stayed to ourselves back in our, back in our own division, you know. I would say the people in the turret one up there probably was, probably seen them a whole lot more than we did, you know. But we would see them occasionally. But not that often. Okay. Uh, do you remember? Do you remember any captain's masks? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember uh, a whole lot about it. No. Okay. Yeah, just for the record, it means uh, discipline. Uh, correct. Do Cap what? Uh, captain's mass. It means discipline. Just for the historical record. Uh, no, I don't. I don't know of anybody that had a captain's mass or anything when I was in. Uh, okay. Okay, so after the ship was decommissioned, uh, you left the Navy, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's shift and talk about your uh, post-Navy uh, life. Uh, how was it uh, leaving the Navy and getting adjusted to, to civilian life again? Uh, it wasn't much trouble. I mean, I kind of had things planned out, what I wanted to do, you know. 
I just, uh, I left the Navy and got married and uh, decided to be a welder, so I went to welding school and I did go under the GI Bill and went to welding school for two years and, and that's basically what I've done for the next 40 years was welding, you know. And uh, that's uh, basically about it. Okay. Uh, is there anything uh, you like to say that uh, I didn't ask about? No, I just uh, like to thank you all for letting me take the tour and showing me everything that you did. I, uh, I've always wanted my wife to come and see it, and we we really enjoyed the uh, the tour. And uh, and uh, y'all really got a nice thing here. It's a, really a great thing for people to see that they probably would never get the chance to see it if it wasn't for y'all. Right. Yeah, we appreciate it. So we're just about getting to the um, uh, closing remarks of this interview. Uh, so uh, let me ask that this is your first time back, correct? On the ship? Yeah, this is my first okay. time I visited the ship. Yeah. Right. So well, how's it like stepping back on this ship? Uh, it brings back a lot of memories. It really does. And it, uh, uh, I was really grateful that my wife could you know, get up here and see it and, and uh, see what it was like. I, she, she's heard me talk about it several times, and I was glad for her to get to see it firsthand, you know. But uh, uh, the, the, the ship uh, really don't look as big to me now as it did the first time I seen it. The first time I seen it, I thought it was gigantic, you know. And it's still big, but nothing like the first time I seen it, you know. Okay. Uh, did you get to see um, turret number two while you were here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how how's it how's it like? Uh, has it has it been like restored to how you used to remember it? Yeah, pretty much how I remembered it. Uh, everything pretty well looks the the same. A lot of stuff I forgot about how it actually even looked, and uh, it's uh, uh, really really been a, a great thing just to go back to it and see it see it one more time you know okay uh, a couple final questions uh, first is um, uh, did the Navy have any impact on your life uh, yeah I guess it would I think it did I think it uh, taught me a lot about discipline and different things like that and, and uh, uh, you know I think it, I think uh, military helps anybody. I really do. I think it's a great thing. I think everybody should go through it. But uh, I would say mostly discipline and and, and uh, how to perform a job, perform it well, and get it done. You know, that's what I think about it. Oh yes, sir. All right. Uh, last question, which is uh, for a legacy. So. As you're probably aware, this is going to be uh, preserved here on the ship, as well as potentially be sent to the Library of Congress, the State Library, and any other institution who may eventually uh, receive um, these interviews. So this will be available to students, researchers, historians, and anybody else who uh, may be viewing this you know, down the future, uh, who, who wants to learn about American history and the military history. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say as a way to leave a message to whoever may be viewing and listening to this? Well, as all I can really tell them is, is uh, you know, it was a great experience for me, and uh, I treasure every moment that I was on this ship. Uh, uh, of course, like anybody in the military, when you're in it, you want to get home because you miss your loved ones and different things like that. But it was a great experience, and uh, I treasure the time that I was on it, I really do. And it was a great experience, it really was. Okay, all right, so uh, that'll be my closing uh, question. Is there... Well, I thought that was. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that is my closing question, so. Uh, anything else you'd like to add before I stop? No, I can't think of anything else to add. I hope, I hope this helps you, and I, I hope somebody, uh, I hope it helps somebody years and years from now. But I can't really think of any more else to tell you, really. Okay, well. Uh, I wish I could have been more help. Oh no, you're you're really great help, sir. Yeah. Especially your service to this country. All right. Well, in that case, uh, we can conclude this interview. Uh, so 
uh, Mr. Raymond Michael Allen, I want to thank you for your service and taking the time to uh, join us today. And this will conclude our interview. So once again, my name is Hugh Sung, assistant with the Oral History Program of the Battleship, New Jersey Museum Memorial here in Camden, New Jersey. And today is Monday, October 1st of 2018. And this recording and any transcripts, abstracts, or indexes made for the recordings will be stored in the Oral History uh, Program of the Battleship, New Jersey, as well as the Library of Congress Veterans History Project and the New Jersey State uh, Library System. And all recordings will be made available to writers, researchers, teachers, and historians. And once again, my name is Hugh Sung, signing off.